Welcome to Alaska Duck Adventure, and today this is going to be part two of Finishing the Coop. <laughs> Welcome back boys and girls and this is going to be part two. If you haven't watched part one, I'll link it above. Give that a watch if you like. Hopefully today we'll be finishing up. So let's jump into the build. Alright, I'm doing the same concept as before. Outside on this one, I had a 2x6. I cut it into 7 inches and then I cut it in half. So it saves some wood and it'll provide the support that it needs. It's going to be 36 up front. 30 in the back. And I'm thinking about instead of doing the bin, maybe I'll just do the five gallon bucket. Kind of like what I'm doing in the garage. Just put a lid on it and have them do it that way. All right, I got the supports on for the front. I'm gonna do some cross supports. So I'm able to hang over the roof so it's covered. So let me get that cut. Now I got the run area all framed up where their food and water is gonna be. I am planning on putting a roof here. Sorry boys and girls, it's the uh, next day. My memory card got full. So I was saying I got the top here secured. If I was a little smarter, I wasn't trying to save wood. Probably should have made this a little higher so it would be even with this roof. But either way, it's still gonna work. So next I need to work out the four doors I plan on putting in here and get the roof set up. And I'm also planning on taking this green wire, which is more of a plastic polyester, and wrap it around the outside, top of the roof and down, just so no other um, predators, birds, or anything else can get into the coop. I added a top brace here for the roof, and I also added a brace right here for the outside door going into the run. Next, I'm gonna work on getting all the pieces, make sure I have enough for all the doors I want. I don't know if you can hear the rain right now, but of course that storm came in. So I am pretty much gone all the way around with this plastic chicken wire. I'm gonna give you guys different angles. It's fully wrapped, so you can't get in. All the air vents, nice and covered. I need to add the door piece right there and add that piece of wood on top to support the roof. And of course I went all the way around. This side's not really necessary, but you know, makes it look good and added security. And of course I did the complete backside and all the vents back there. Next, I need to work on the roof and start putting the doors on and also adding the support for the door where the water goes. All right, let me get my camera out of the rain and get this covered up. So while it's raining outside, you know, get the little deckies, which are not so little anymore. It's absolutely huge. Basically fully feathered. Let them come in here. <laughs> Let them get in here and have some fun in water and swim around and get all clean. So, rain outside, swim inside. Alright, welcome back. It's day number three. Unfortunately, a rainstorm did come in. I was able to cut the doors out. So next what I need to do is put up this brace and work on the roof. This hopefully should be done today. The weather seems very nice. So hopefully this will be accomplished. I really do not want to do a part three. All right, I got this brace on. So just put the door so it can, I'm most likely gonna have it swing. I got it stapled so it's nice and tight. I got a support up here for the roof. And next I'm gonna be putting on the roof. So, yay. So starting to sink water tight. So I'm going to be putting on this aluminum roof material that I've had for a while. I was lucky enough when I first moved up here that I got this for free. Guy yeah, was getting rid of it before he threw it away. And I've been using this for many projects. So it's definitely been coming in handy. All right, got this one nice and secure. It's going to provide even more support, you know, for our snow load. I'm going to put the rest of them going this way, even I know it's not the correct way. So I'm gonna start at the bottom, gonna work my way up. I'm not too worried about snow falling off because it's not good enough of an angle. Just wanna make sure it stays waterproof. Well, boys and girls, that was tiring. Been getting bit up by all the mosquitoes and a thousand screws. 
definitely not pretty, but it'll work. It'll be functional. I put a wood here to protect from getting cut up. I don't know if I'm bleeding or not. I might have cut myself. So if I got it here, because I don't want to get cut up, and I sure don't want my kids getting cut. I added some metal here for added protection, and also to block some wind and snow, rain, any type of weather that may get in. I did leave room for ventilation. You do want to be able to vent the coop out as much as possible, so everything stays dry, doesn't mold, because the ducks produce a lot of moisture when they breathe. So you want to keep them nice and dry. So hopefully I have enough ventilation between out here and the openings I have all the way around the coop. I did provide some more protection on the far side over here and well as the back on that side. While I was doing the back on that side, I started hearing ducks and I was like, what? Looked up and there was ducks on top of my roof. I'm building a duck coop and I guess wild ducks want to join the family. So that does pretty interesting. I'll probably do a short on it. Maybe I'll add it to this video, but I thought that was pretty cool. So anyway, so next we have to do is the doors. I need to back the coop up to where it should be. I might add one more piece of metal over there on the far side. As I said, I was getting eat up by mosquitoes. So, I mean, it doesn't really need to get that protective. It's going to be against the fence anyways. I just wanted to get right next to the door so it's not blowing directly inside the coop. All right, let me get this moved back into place, and then I'll start putting the doors on. I just showed you guys the part number for this latch. I got it at Lowe's. Same thing with the hinges. I'll purchase at Lowe's. All right, there's the part number for the hinges and also got some eye hook screws. There's the part number also at Lowe's. So two of the doors are on. I put an eye hook screw up top here so I could hook it, should stay, then close. There's also a piece of two by four over here, which is applying pressure outwards to cause tension on here, so it requires a little bit of strength to undo it. Probably the weak spot is gonna be this corner right here. On this one, it's in a down angle, so you have to lift up on it. I put a piece of two by four here, because even with it hooked, there's like about an inch gap. So I put a small piece of two by four there so they can't stick their heads down and nothing can really come up. It's like playing fortress as a kid. You gotta think of all the little spots that could get invaded. So next I have to do the ramp and the inside door. And hopefully it doesn't rain. It starts sprinkling a little bit. It's gonna turn into like a 200 day project it feels like. Sorry if the audio is crappy. I had to unplug the mic, it died. It is like after nine right now, and this video is probably like 10 minutes for you guys, but it's about a half a day for me. So I'm a little exhausted. But as I promised, I'll show you guys the coop, how I built it. There's still a little bit more things need to be done. I'm just gonna do another video. It's gonna be the duck run part. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fence it off, enclose it, add a gate, and how are they going to get out of the coop? Because everybody knows ducks don't like going up steep stairs. And that is pretty steep. Alright, let me give you a quick tour. So this is going to be the sleeping area. I have that dog kennel, which is stainless steel. I'll probably do a review, let you guys know what I think about it when I use it. That was purchased on Amazon. It's meant for a dog crate. And it has rolled edges, so there's no sharp spots. So there's the door. That goes into the sleeping area so I can clean it out. This is how I'm attaching it to the roof to hold it up. All right, let me close it. It's probably too dark to see the mesh, but the whole area right there is all mesh, so nothing can get in. There's a eye screw hook thing. Metal. Same thing over here. There's mesh going all the way down there. 
Also on the sleeping area, I put a two by four, so I'm using my foot right here, which presses it out, which applies pressure onto that latch. Requires some effort to get it undone. I put a piece of two by four right here, just to get rid of that gap. So less chance of something getting in or them poking their heads out. Here's where their food and water is gonna be. Same type of latch. I need to shave a little bit off the top here, just so it's not so tight, especially with the change in season. I don't want it to be too difficult to get it open and closed. I had another two by four on the bottom right there, you see, just so they can't poke their heads out or something else poke their heads in. I did put two by fours on the back side of the hinges, so it gives it better support, more for the screws to grip onto. Same thing along the top here, I put that green mesh. Here's the picture of my roof, that's not that good, but it's gonna be functional. Here's the coop door going out to the run. It's not finished. It's two pieces of plywood. And then I made a bunch of plywood on top of it to try to get as flat as possible. And also should help with them getting some grip. You'll find out in the next video how they're gonna get out because obviously it can't be that steep. And then green mesh all the way around. I do need to go through the whole entire coop and grind off all the points from the screws so the duckies don't get hurt. So there's the door that blocks off from the sleeping area to the food and water area. Mostly for when I'm cleaning out or, you know, whatever reason. Multiple doors so I can, you know, decide which ones I want to be open. And then if I'm cleaning it out, I don't want to worry about them not having their food and water. And obviously there's a big hole up there. So plenty of ventilation and I guess if they really want to, they could probably jump over that. If it becomes an issue, I'll close it off. This is inside the sleeping area. On the left hand side, there's a piece of plywood. I'm using it as a handle and just pull that back. And now it's open. So pretty simple. Hopefully it doesn't build up with a lot of nasty stuff from the bedding. But hopefully it'll all, you know, be manageable. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. Sorry my audio right now is probably not that good. But if you guys can, like and subscribe. Stay tuned for my upcoming videos, and thanks for watching. Till next time, bye.